Okay, so sorry for the Zoom malfunctions, but I think we're gonna get started. Hi everyone, welcome. If you have any questions, you could either unmute or write it in the chat box and my sister's here to help me answer the question. So if you have a bag, now would be the time to unload everything. So we have our fillings. Make sure if you don't have a bag, first thing you wanna do is make your, sure your fillings are prepared because the dough dries really quickly and we wanna be able to work quick once it's made. So we have our gems, we have our two and a quarter cup flour, regular all-purpose flour out of the bag. Next we have they sold our back two eggs. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't do it. Our salt to bring out all the sweetness. They put everything in the bag. Measure. Yeah, can you make sure everybody is muted so we can only hear you? Sure, everyone, we're going to mute everyone. If you have a question, put it in the chat box and we'll unmute you, but we're going to mute everyone. Or if not, please mute your screen so that everyone could hear me. Thank you. Okay, here we have two thirds of a cup sugar. Right down, baking powder, and our vanilla extract, and our quarter cup oil. So everyone, you go put on your aprons, wash your hands, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put all our wet ingredients into our bowl. So our wet ingredients include the eggs. First thing you have to do is check them for blood. So if you bang it on the bowl, you might get some eggshells in your egg. So better bang it on your table so it cracks like that and crack it straight in. Up, down, make sure there's no eggs and drop it in. If anyone wants me to slow down, please let me know and we could slow down. Okay, so one egg into the bowl. Next egg. Check it for blood spots because blood is not kosher. Let's lift, lift it up. No blood, it could go straight in. So right now everyone's bowls should have their two eggs. Oh, how about this? I forgot this part. Before we start, for those of you who did not get a kid or if you did, all you need is a spoon or a spatula or something to mix. If you have a whisk, you could do it with that. But anything that mixes, you could do it with a rolling pin and a cup or a cookie cutter. That's all you need and a bowl, of course. Okay, so in my bowl, I don't know if you see, I have two cameras on, so one you'll be able to see everything on top. And one you'll be able to see my face. So in my bowl, I have my two eggs. Now I'm going to add my quarter cup oil, like I said, all my wet ingredients, my vanilla extract, a teaspoon, so that is two eggs, a quarter cup oil, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and not your water, everything besides the water. And now we're gonna add our sugar. I know it doesn't seem like sugar is a wet ingredient, but it is always considered a wet ingredient. So I don't know the science Sorry, behind it, but I'm sure we could down. check it up after. Maybe I could be slowed down a little so bit, two of thirds of sugar. Does someone have a question? Can we just slow down? Sure, I'm going to wait. I'm just going to have my sugar and I'm going to wait. So in your bowl, you should have two eggs, vanilla, sugar, and oil. So two-thirds sugar, two eggs, quarter cup oil, and a teaspoon or a splash of vanilla. It depends how vanilla you like it. So that should be in your bowl. I'm going to wait till everyone does that. Okay. So 
while everyone gets uh, their wet ingredients in their bowls, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about why we have hamantashen on Purim. So, hamantashen, as you can see, are triangles. So, some people say it's for the Agne Haman, like Ahman's ears, or triangles also. If you look at a hamantash, the filling is hidden. And in the miracle of Purim, Hashem was hidden. Same reason why we get dressed up, because Hashem was hidden. Okay, so does every, is everyone ready? Put a thumbs up if you're ready. Thumbs up, I see some thumbs up. Okay, I think we're ready to start. So take your fork, spoon, whisk, whatever you're using to mix, and whisk up your wet ingredients till they're all incorporated. Mix it up, mix it up. Your sugar should start getting like diluted, dissolved. So, is everyone's batter starting to look like this? You see how it's like liquidy and everything's mixed. You can't tell the difference between any of the ingredients. So that's exactly how your batter should look now. Runny and yellow and eggy. Okay, so I'm gonna wait till everyone gets that done so we can get started on the next part. For those of you who are using a whisk or a fork, now you could continue using it, but your whisk won't work for the next part. So I suggest you get a spatula or a spoon. I'm using a little plastic spatula. So I'm gonna wait till everyone has that ready. Let's wait and see. Okay, keep mixing if you're waiting because we don't want it to separate. So if you're waiting for our fellow Zoom mates, just keep whisking so that it won't separate. You see, when I left it, it got like a film on top. Okay, so if you're ready, show thumbs up. No rush. If you need more time, we're happy to wait. We want to make sure everyone's on the same page. I see some thumbs up. We're going to wait for some more. I think we're ready to start. Okay, so this is where it starts to get a little more complicated, but it's not complicated. We're all going to master this together. So I'm gonna take out my spatula and I'm going to put my baking powder into my flour. This step doesn't really matter. If you wanna put it straight in your bowl, you could do that too. And my salt, just gonna give it a quick little stir. You do not need to do this step. If you wanna put everything straight in, you're welcome to do that too. So in here I have two and a quarter cups of all purpose flour a teaspoon of baking powder, and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt or a half a teaspoon of salt, depends what you like. The salt is just there to bring out the flavor of all the other ingredients, so you don't need to worry. So right here, my flour, baking powder, salt. In short, all my dry ingredients, and it's gonna go straight into the bowl. Get everything out there. And now I'm going to Mix it in. See, I'm just folding everything in. It's gonna just mix it up until you start seeing this like, it's gonna be more on the dry side. So you should see a batter that's more dry. And then we're gonna, Deal with it after. It's gonna not a batter. I don't know why I'm calling it a batter, but it's more of a cookie dough. So we're gonna mix that up. Everyone's even though we're all using the same measurements. Sometimes some people's are more dry than others. Sometimes people's are some wet than others. That's the thing with baking. You really have to play it by eye.
Okay, so as you can see, I don't know if you are looking at which screen you're looking at of mine, but my cookie dough is coming along. Hold on, my thing is falling down. Okay, so your cookie dough should look like this. It's a bit crummy. Is everyone up to this step? I hope everyone's up to this. I'm going to wait for the thumbs up again. So your dough should start looking crummy. It's not going to be pulled together yet. It's going to be a crummy dough. So I'm just going to wait till everyone's ready. Give me your thumbs up when you're ready. I want to see the thumbs up. I'm going to wait. No rush. I'm going to wait till everyone is ready. So like I said, in your bowl, you should have all your ingredients besides your water and your fillings, and it should look somewhat crummy. So I see thumbs up. Let me see any more. I'm going to wait a few more seconds. We're going to wait till we see a few more. I want everyone to be up to the same step because we're getting to the shaping, which could get a little bit complicated. So let's wait up. Let's see. So like I said, if yours doesn't look exactly like mine, don't panic. We're going to work through this together. It makes sense. I made this batch, this cookie, this cookie dough for my hamadashan already three times this week. And every time it came out differently. So don't fret. We're going to do this together. It could be yours is way more floury and it could be yours is more liquidy. So don't worry. So I'm just going to wait to see thumbs up. I want to see thumbs up for everyone who's ready. Let me see the thumbs up. Are we ready to start? Let's see your thumbs up. Are we ready to start? Are we ready to start? The water we're going to start adding now. Exactly what I'm waiting for. I see there's a question about adding water. So right now I'm just waiting until everyone's dry ingredients are incorporated into their wet and we're going to add the water slowly. So does that mean everyone's ready? Okay, so we're going to start. Now is when you're going to take your water. Okay? If you don't have a spoon, you don't have to. I'm not going to use a spoon, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to put on a pair of gloves because I find this step easier with my hands. And now we're going to take our crummy dough and form it into a beautiful hamantash dough. So, here we have our water and our ingredients in the bowl. So you could feel it, how it's feeling. Mine is actually not feeling very crummy. It's pretty good. So what you're going to do is you're going to add a teaspoon of water. I'm telling you a little goes a long way. We're going to do this slowly together. Pour a tea, about a teaspoon of water, like a splash of water, into your bowl. Now, is everyone with me? Now we're going to mix it in. And you're going to see it's going to start forming a dough way better. My dough is looking pretty good already. So I'm not going to add more water, but if you need to add more water, go ahead. Add a little bit at a time until you get a dough. I'm going to show you guys my dough. You see how it's formed a ball and it's super smooth. It's going to be a little bit more on the sticky side and that's good. So this is my dough right now. It's a smooth, beautiful dough. We want ball. We want it to be sticky because we want our hamantash edges to stick. So. Go ahead and add your water slowly, a little bit at a time, mixing it in. Make sure your water is fully incorporated before adding your second splash of water. So your dough should be beautiful and smooth. I still have a little bit at the bottom, so I'm going to keep mixing it. If you want to make this dough again in the future and you want to play around, we're doing very basic fillings today. So if you... Does someone have a question? Yeah. Do you have a question? 
Come in here. Um, how much water do you put? A splash. Did you mix all your ingredients before you put the water? Um, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So put a splash of water, not a lot of water, like a spoonful, and mix it in. Some people are going to need more, and some people are going to be less. If when you mix it in, it does not look like mine, it's more dry, and you see the flour, then you could add a little more water. You get it? Mine is our, my, ours is like a crummy. Yeah, so if it's crummy, crumb. you want to add some water to it. That's the point. The water is going to make it's it look crumb. like crumbs. Okay. So, understand? Is that good? Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the dough should be, everyone's dough should be coming together in a smooth, Ball, but back to what I was saying, if you want to become more complicated with your fillings and do more citrusy gems or really what you could put anything in a hamantash. I've even put salmon in it with spinach in a flaky dough instead of a cookie dough and it was really good. You could use this cookie dough and you could put sprinkles, you could make s'mores, you could put marshmallows and graham crackers. Um, the list goes on and on. Instead of chocolate chips, you could put Nutella, or you could put like a brownie filling. Um, what are other options for no chocolate lovers? Um, different rad, different jams, you could do apricot jam. You could do, I'm just playing with my dough because I don't want it to dry out. So if you're just waiting with, with me for everyone else, just keep playing with your dough. So as I was saying, your the fillings, it's literally, you could do whatever you want. Um, yeah, literally, you can do whatever you want. And if you're going for more of like a citrusy jam, like let's say you're doing more of a, I don't know, what's a citrusy jam? A pineapple jam or even the raspberry jam, you could put in your dough, you could put orange zest or lemon zest to make it more of a scented style. In our house, we like the dough plain, personally, and with a chocolate filling, but everyone could choose what they would like. So if you're waiting with everyone else, play with your dough as I am because we don't want it to harden up. I'm just gonna clear up my workspace. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys in the beginning, I'm sorry, but I don't know if you noticed, but I have over my workspace a plastic bag, a plastic tablecloth. It's going to make cleanup easier for me, so I should have told you guys this at the beginning, but I forgot. So just next time you bake or even before we form them, if you want, you can put a plastic tablecloth on or parchment paper works just as well. Anything you want, or you can put it directly on your counter. You're just going to have a harder cleanup. Is there a question? How much flour? So the recipe calls for two and a quarter cup flour. You might need a little two cups and a quarter cup flour. So I hope you got that. You might need a little more, you might need a little less. The same way that some people need a little more water, some people didn't. That's how recipes work. You have to play it by air. Is there any more questions? Any more questions? Okay, so while we're waiting for all our fellow Zoomers to get their doughs incorporated, you could keep kneading your dough because we don't want it getting a crust. When you're ready, give your thumbs up so we know we could continue. Let me see the thumbs up when you're ready. No rush. The more I work my dough, the smoother it gets. It's a little on the sticky side, but that's okay. So keep mixing your dough. So I'm just 
need, not kneading it. I'm like pushing the sides under the dough until I wait till everyone's ready. I see some really good looking dough there. I love how everyone's doughs are coming along. Hands are moving. Love it. Keep working the dough. And don't forget to give me your thumbs up when you're ready. Let's see. Keep moving your dough. Keep moving your dough. If your dough's ready and you're ready to form, I suggest you go wash your hands before we start shaping our hamitashi. Make sure our hands are nice and clean. Should have a beautiful, smooth dough at this point. Don't forget to give us your hand thumbs up when you're done. If you have a question, don't be shy. I'm here to help. Can you double the recipe? Yes, you can double the recipe. Um, of course, you'll need a bigger bowl and just make sure that you doubled every single ingredient because, yeah, sometimes I'm making a double recipe and I forget to like double the baking powder or something and then your things don't rise properly. So just make sure that you've doubled all the ingredients if you're doubling the recipe. It does not make that many. It makes like max 18. So it's a smaller recipe. A good question. Okay, anyone have their thumbs up? Let's see your thumbs up. Let's see your can, thumbs up when you're ready. Can you use a mixer to do the dough part? Or it's better I by have her? not used a mixer, but you could use a mixer. I've used a mixer in the past for other cookie recipes. If you are using a mixer, make sure to use the cookie blade, not your whisks. Use your cookie blade or the hook, but it's going to come out just as good. Probably even easier because you don't have to do the work by hand. Okay, is everyone ready? Thumbs up. Let's see your thumbs up when you're ready. Okay, do I have to go ahead? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna move my bowl aside and I'm gonna cut a piece of parchment paper and put it on my counter. This way I have no dough getting stuck to my counter. Okay, so there's different ways you could do this part. This is where we're gonna shape our hamantash into Haman's ears. So I'm gonna divide my dough in two so I can show you both ways. And if you want, you can try out both ways as well and see which one you like better. So the first way is to have my dough right here. My dough, do we have a question? Um, we have a question, I'm just gonna wait till I hear it. A cookie dough and a dough hook. So that's a good question. The cookie hook, usually the dough hook, you have to buy extra because it's for a bigger amount. Also the cookie, the dough hook is like a hook or a squiggle. It's the cookie hook on, let's say the KitchenAid is more of a triangle with a line in between. In the Bosch, it's the cookie hook is the hook that's like two lines going down. I'm gonna finish now what I'm saying. And the dough hook, you have a separate bowl for it. But the dough bowl, usually you do when you have a bigger batch. So if you're doubling the recipe, maybe use the dough hook. But the cookie one would work both ways. Did I answer the question? Okay, great. So here I have my half of cookie dough. I'm gonna put it on my counter. So I'm gonna take off my gloves. I wash my hands because the gloves tend to get stuck. So there's two things you could do. Three actually, either to help your dough not stick, you could sprinkle flour. I don't like because it, I find it dries out the cookies a little bit. You could put a piece of parchment paper on top or a new discovery I did is I just go for it. And if I see that my dough is getting a little sticky, I spray a bit of hemp because I find it the cleanest route. But if you don't want the extra oil or whatever, go ahead and sprinkle some flour, do another layer of parchment paper. Those work first, but this is my preferred way. 
So now you should have a rolling pin. Anything long, anything will do the trick. You in your hand, you can smash it down. I happen to be using this rolling pin. It's just a plain rolling pin. So everyone take out your rolling pins. And we're going to start doing our dough. So constantly turn it because we don't want it getting stuck to our parchment paper. So pick it up and put it down again and roll it. See, it's starting, I don't know if you could see, but my rolling pin is starting to get stuck the more I leave it on it. So I'm gonna work quickly and keep flipping and keep moving. If I find it's getting sticky, I'm gonna spray a little bit. This trick also, if you're making challah, instead of putting flour on your countertops when you're braiding your challah, I know it sounds crazy, but put oil, the pan, because after you won't have like, when you're scraping your counter off and there's like those flour clumps connected to it, you won't have that extra fun and excitement in your challah making experience. So if you prefer life a little simpler, I suggest that tip. So as you can see, I just keep rolling out my dough. It's getting stuck to my parchment, so I'm just gonna lift it a bit. Don't make it too thick and don't make it too thin. So I would say my dough is like a quarter of an inch. It's not too thick, not too thin. I'm trying to see if you guys could see it. Maybe switch to my camera that you just see my dough. And then you'll be able to see. Um, actually, we're going to pin my hands because this step is all about the hands. So if you want to, I'm going to pin my hands, but you'll still hear me. Okay, so your dough should be rolled out. And... I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to move around so you see how thin it is. Okay. There's a question. A comment? Okay, we're all good? Okay, so I'm going to wait till everyone does. I'm going to wait for the thumbs up, but here I have, oh, I have to switch cameras. I'm using, okay, let's try to do this. Here I have a plastic cup. You can use a glass cup, you can use a cookie cutter, and just make sure the circle is around that big. I'm not sure, it's like big in my finger. It doesn't really matter. If you make your cookie your cookie cuts bigger, you just have to put more filling. It's up to you. Some people like to do huge hamantashin, some people like to do small ones. It's really up to you. This is where you could get creative and do whatever you want. So I just am using a plastic cup the 10 ounce plastic cup, and that's what I'm gonna be using to make my cookie cups. Okay, are we ready? Give me a thumbs up when your dough is all rolled out. I'm gonna wait till everyone's doughs are rolled out. If your dough is really sticky, you could add some flour or do the spray trick. While I'm waiting, I have a cookie sheet here. Let me show you all a cookie sheet. I'm just gonna add a parchment paper, you could spray it. And that's where I put my cookies once they're done. Okay, so give me your thumbs up when your dough is all rolled out. If your dough, if your dough is, um, if you didn't divide your dough, you're going to have a bigger piece of dough rolled out. I divided my dough, so I have a smaller piece rolled out. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting my cookies. So how do I do this? I take the circle and just put it and squish and turn. Put it closest. The closer you do it to the next one, the less work you're going to have to do next time. So squish and turn. Squish and turn. Squish and turn. If anyone has any questions, let me know. Squish and turn. The turn is going to make it release easier. Squish and turn. Try to make them closest to each other possible. I just made a mark in two of them, but that's okay. Um, and that one. And now I'm just taking off the excess cookie dough that's around my hamantasha. The beauty of making homemade is that not all of them look the same. They're not all perfect, but they taste the best. So. Let's do this together. So we'll take off all the excess dough and put it in a bundle here. Okay. 
the little corners are harder, but we're going to get to them. Okay, so everyone's dose should be rolled out. I got about 12 cookies. So the rest I just roll back into a bowl and we're going to do the same thing with it later. Now, over here I have two options for fillings. I have chocolate chips and raspberry jam. Like I said, the, the flavors for inside are up to you. You could do whatever you like. So I'm going to wait for some thumbs up before I start doing the fillings. Let me know when I could start. I'm waiting for the go ahead. While I wait, I'm just going to go back to my original, the rest of my dough. I'm going to work it a little bit because it's starting to form a bit of a crust and I don't want it to dry out. So I'm just going to work it a bit. Okay, is everyone ready? Let's see some thumbs up. Do we see any thumbs up? Are we good? How about this? If you're not ready, let us know. I'm going to wait 30 seconds and we'll see if anyone's letting us know if they're ready or not. Because this part I really want to do together. While I wait, I'm just going to release my circle from the parchment paper because they tend to get a little stuck. I don't want them to get too stuck. This step, you don't have to do. I'm just doing it because I'm waiting for you guys and I don't want it to get stuck. But if you're, the quicker you work, the easier it's going to be. Did you buy your rolling pin in Montreal? Looks like a good one. This rolling pin is probably older than me. <laughs> I think you could get it at Cuisinet. So yeah, actually I feel like I saw one at Walmart. Not exactly the same, but this shape. Okay, so my circles are ready. I'm gonna take this as a go ahead because I don't see anyone objecting. So I have my jam, I'm gonna start, and my chocolate chips. I'm gonna start with my chocolate chips because they're cleaner option. The jam leaks a little bit and gets in the way. So I'm gonna take like a handful of chocolate chips. You can put as many or as little as you want. Now, I'm gonna show you different hamantash I have here. So this one, I don't know if you could see, but the corners are folded. This is the folded version. So it's more distinct. So I'm gonna show you how to make each and every one. Now, there's the pinched option. A lot of the time, the pinch option, it doesn't open and you can't really see the filling. Sometimes you could see the filling, but this is the pinched option. It's more the pieces stick up and it gets like those crispy, tops so this is a pinched option and then just to remind you this is a folded option then you could just squeeze them together and not do the pinch it's more like a push so we're going to go through each one the first one i'm going to do is the folded option so my filling is in the middle of my circle and you're going to take one corner and you're going to fold it over i know circle doesn't have corners but i guess the side just fold it over like so. Once you do that, you're going to take the bottom and fold it up just like so. Press down for pressure because we don't want our dose. We don't want it. Hold on. Let me get it to my camera. We don't want it to open in the oven. Now we're going to take our last side and fold it over. It won't be a perfect triangle. At least mine are never perfect triangles. But that's how it's going to look. When it bakes, the inside is going to open and you're going to see the chocolate. Once it's done, like I said, I have my cookie sheet. I'm just going to place it nicely onto my cookie sheet. So that's your folded option. I'm going to do that one more time together with you before I go on to the pinched option. Don't forget, you could ask questions, okay? So here I have my circle. I'm going to put, I'm going to actually do it with my jam. I'm going to take a little bit of jam because I find the jam tends to squirt everywhere and I don't want my hamantashen to open. I put a little bit of jam in the center. Here's my jam. Take my side. Two fingers, push it, pinch it. 
If your dough is not squeezing together, take a little a bit of water on your two fingers and push it there and then squeeze it closed. It should close. Okay, then next side, fold and squeeze. Next side, fold and squeeze. So you should have a triangle looking commentage. So that is our fold option. Does anyone have any questions on the fold? I'll go back to it before I get to the next. But first, I'm going to go to the next option. Everyone understand? Okay, that sounds good. So now I'm going to take my next circle. And I'm going to show you how to do the pinched option. So I put my hamantasha in the middle. This one I'm actually going to put down because it's harder to do. I need my two hands. So I hope you all could see. So my fillings in the middle. Now I'm going to take both hands and I'm going to put it under like so and then pinch. See my dough is getting a little stuck to my finger. That's okay. Now I'm going to do the bottom with all four fingers and pinch. And this is my pinched version. Do you see how this looks more of a traditional hamitage, I find personally? And the other one is more, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's a little different. I find that with, um, when you have a very bulging filling, sometimes it's better to do the folded option because you could get more control of it. And the squeezing you'll need, I don't know how to explain it. Like when you squeeze it, the jam tends to like leak a lot. So if you want to put a lot of filling, do the folded option over the squeezed option. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do it with the filling. Everyone good so far? Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to continue. Now, like I said, I'm just going to put it in my hand just so I can put the filling in. But then I will switch it onto the countertop because I don't want to. Um, I need all my fingers. So I'm taking my two fingers and squishing. I'm going to actually add, no, I won't. I was going to say I'm going to add some water to my fingers, but I don't want it to make it more sticky. So I'm just going to leave it. Now I'm going to do the bottom, squish my ends. And there you have your hamantashen. When it bakes, the pinches get crispier than the rest of the dough. And it makes a beautiful golden color. So that's your squeezed option. Now, the other one you could do is very similar. It's like a in between both. It usually like, it's not really planned. It just happens most of the time. But let's see if we can make it planned. So I'm gonna put my chocolate chips in the center, center. And then I'm just gonna go like this, try. It's gonna most probably open, but we'll go like that. And then you fold the bottom. So it's like a combination of the two. That way you have a bigger peak hole. I'll show you how to do that again. So I'll do it with the jam. Put my jam right in the center. That's a little, okay. Now pinch the top. And fold the bottom. And that's how you make our third option. So let me just remind you how each looks. This is the folded option. This is the squeeze option. Your jam is most probably gonna see through. And this is your squeeze fold option. I don't want you to call it option number three. So I'm going to keep doing this with the rest of my cookie dough circles. Stop me if you have any questions. I'm here and then I'll show you the next technique that we have to roll out your hamantasha. So I'm just going to do it again. I'll talk as I go so that you could follow. So in here I put my jam. I'm just going to squeeze. This is option number two. I'm going to just squeeze and squeeze. If your hands are getting sticky, you could actually put some oil on your hands like this. A touch. Don't put a lot. We don't want oily things. And keep going. So this is my option number two. Now I'm going to make an option number one. Drop the chips in the center. And fold and fold. Now is a great time to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So like I, I'm just going to repeat that. 350 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Now I'm going to do, I'm not really a fan of the set option, so I'm going to stick to my first two options. And this one I'm going to do a quick pinch. So as you can see, this one, the filling showing a little bit, which I like. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do some more gems. Squeeze the tops. Squeeze the bottoms. And we're good. I'm going to have two more left, and then I'm going to show you guys the next method. Okay, so I have one more. I'm going to finish it off. Then I'm going to start showing you the next method. Anyone have questions? Uh, I see a question. Oh, seems like we're getting that it's pretty clear. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to wait about 30 seconds. I'm going to work my second ball of dough a bit. Even though I still have this, I'm going to get back to this leader and make more. But right now, I want to show you guys how to make my next option. So I'm just going to work my dough a bit. For this option, you do not need a rolling pin. So you can just keep moving your dough. I'm just going to knead it up until everyone's ready. I'm actually not such a fan of this option, so I'm going to cut off some dough and use it for the other option. Some people find this easier. I find it comes out prettier the other way. So I like to use the other way, but yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start doing the other option. Whoever wants to follow, you're welcome to follow. Here I have a ball of hamadash dough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in between my two hands and gently roll. Keeping its thickness, I'm going to make a log. So I don't know if you can see, but this is how it looks. If you would be using more dough, it would be longer. But this is how my log looks. So I hope you all could see. Okay, so now that my log is ready, anyone want me to wait? We're good to go? Okay, I'm going to go. Now that my log is ready, I'm going to put it onto the table. And I'm going to slice. And then I have a uh, round-ish shape. This is why I don't like this way because the circles aren't that big. And then you end up having, for someone like me that likes to make them circles, you have to like push them. So yeah, I'm just going to keep cutting them and putting them down. This is another way you can make your hamantash in. Like I said, even though the first option is a little more steps, I personally prefer it, but like I said, everyone could do what makes them feel most comfortable. Because you see, as you get to the bottom, it starts to turn into some sort of square. But I find actually this works best with chocolate chip cookies instead of having to roll out your chocolate chip cookies because chocolate chip cookies spread out when they bake. So it's better to, like you could do this method with them because then the shape doesn't really matter. But with my hamantashen, I like them to be round because then they're more symmetrical. Even though I know we're not in a bakery and they don't need to be perfect, but we try our best. So I'm just going to go ahead and reform all the ones that I cut. So like I said, this is probably a better option for chocolate chip cookies. And, and it's a little harder to get them thin this way. So I'm just going ahead and squishing them up a little bit. But the perk of this is that you won't be left with any extra dough after that. You have to go ahead and re-roll. It's just all completely ready. So this is how I'm going to do it. 
And they don't come out the same shape because I wasn't measuring my uh, width of my circle. So, okay, now this blob I'm just gonna add here. And these are all my circles. Okay, now I'm gonna do my option number one again. In my middle, I'm gonna put some gem and fold. Oh, see this one I overfilled. So look what's happening. The jam is seeping out. That's why I'm gonna stick with my option number one because that way I don't get jam stuck in between the seams and then it's gonna open. So this one is very filled for the jam lovers. I'm gonna keep going. This one I'm gonna do chocolate chip and I'm gonna squeeze. And there I have my hum and dash. So I'm actually going to spray a touch on my hand because they're starting to stick. Literally like a touch. Just rub it together. More. Yeah. Like I said, you could choose any flavor you want. You could do Nutella. This one I overfilled again, so I'm folding. You could do um, what other s'mores, like I said, you could do it savory with salmon. and But for the salmon one, I suggest you do puff pastry. You could buy puff pastry, roll it out, you cut your circles and you fill it with salmon, spinach, mushroom. It's really good. Um, and what other sweet things you could do? Prune, poppy seed. You could make like a lemon meringue. You could make a lemon curd and then fill the insides with it, which is also good. Also, you could take sprinkles and dip the edges like this. You just dip one side into sprinkles and it gives you a really pretty effect. Or if you're lazy when you're making them and then they come out and you decide you wanna be fancy, you can melt some chocolate and just drizzle it across. Or go the simple route and just shake some powdered sugar on it and you're good to go. So I'm just gonna keep going here until all of them are folded. So I'm gonna finish these up and then I'm gonna give you guys your steps for baking. So this one is one of those combinations. Once you get a hang of it, you're not even going to really sink. Sometimes you're going to look back and you'll be like, oh, I did that one like that and that one like that. Because it's more automatic. So, yeah, that's how it goes with time. So, let me just show you all my hamantashin are lined up here. They all look different. They're going to even look more different when they bake. But I've tried many doughs and my favorite thing about this dough is that they do not open when they bake. The most they open is like this one you see it has like a little opening but it doesn't open all the way. I made hamadashin and so disappointing you stood there folding them and they open all the way and they're just like a blob of chocolate chips in the middle. We don't want that happening. So fill your hamadashin and then I'm going to give you the instructions to bake. Okay, so now for the baking instructions that we want to put my me. Thank you. So for the baking instructions, like I said, you should preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Before I move on to the baking instructions, does anyone have a question on folding? I will go back after my instructions, but for now, does anyone have a question on the folding? Anyone have a question on the folding? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a no. Okay, so your oven should be preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and bake it between 20 to 25 minutes. So the ones that are more like this, they're not so golden and the edges aren't so brown, are more on the 20 minute side. These with the golden crispy edges are more on the 25 minute side. We prefer them more closer to 25 minutes. Also, it depends on your oven. So if you want, you can even put 18 minutes and check on it then to make sure that they don't overcook. It's totally, everyone knows their own oven and everyone knows how they like them. So just go by that. So the more they're in the oven, the harder they're gonna get and the more color they're gonna get. So that's how we made our hamantashen. Before we log off, does anyone have any questions? Anyone have any questions or comments before we log off? Thank you so much. My pleasure. This was really, really fun. And let's hope that Michelle will be here and we won't have to celebrate Perm over Zoom and we'll be able to be celebrating all together. Okay, it seems like we're good. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank uh, you so much. My Thank pleasure. You. Thank, Thank you, everyone, you. for joining. Have a great Thank day you. and happy Purim. Uh, one last question. Where did you say you got your rolling pin? Like, it's my mother's from a really long time ago. But I've seen it at Cuisinart. Or at did you say Cuisinart? Cuisinart. It's on Park Avenue. It's a, a oh. kitchen supply store. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. If anyone has any questions, you could email youth at themtc.com. So that's again, youth at the mtc.com. Have a great day and happy prayer. Thank you. Thank My you. pleasure. Bye. Bye.